Hello and welcome to the show. This week's Fail Race vs. the Community was B-Class Modern Cars on Forza 5. Our first race was at the Road Atlanta Short Circuit. The first corner here caused a little bit of a little bit of problems. A, a couple of cars uh, <laughs> ran a little bit wide into turn one. There's plenty of plenty of space. There's lots of sand trap. Uh, over there to uh, to catch the cars. The Kia Seed that we are following at the moment made a good start and as an Audi goes a little bit wide and is a bit out of shape, the Kia has a go up the inside of a Dodge Charger. Unfortunately, it doesn't really have the straight line speed and can't quite get past it. This is a bit of a funny corner. This one is a very, very long right-hander. Uh, it certainly tests the cars, uh, whether you can be flat out through there or not. The Kia we're following can't quite keep up with the Charger in a straight line. It may be better through the corners. However, there are, even on this shortened uh, layout of Road Atlanta, there are still uh, some fairly sizable straights. A little bit of lag going on in this one early on, which is a little bit of a shame. As per normal with Forza 5, whenever the grid is at random, I found my... Uh, I go to the back for some reason. It just always puts me uh, <laughs> at the back of the field. So I had a lot of work to do with my Mazda. I went for the, the MX-5 Cup because I really like this car. I didn't paint it orange this time, I painted it the same colour as my, my real life MX-5. I thought I'd go for it for a little bit of a change. So we come up towards Turn 1, a Nissan 370Z learns the danger of uh, putting a wheel on the grass. I saw a few cars do that when I was watching through the replays there. If you put your wheel just a tiny bit on the dirt, I think it's sort of like astroturfy stuff out there, it'll drag your car off the track and you can't stop it doing it. It's a bit of a weird thing. So yeah, you don't want to be out wide, you don't want to be putting a wheel on the grass over there and this was the battle for second place fairly early on in the race unfortunately things were to go wrong and quite spectacularly wrong Genesis gets a little sideways the master tries to go up the inside and they end up having a coming together not too much anybody could have done to avoid that as the master tries to recover uh, a charger doesn't see him and then I promptly do a corkscrew flip uh, <laughs> it is probably the most spectacular crash we have ever had in versus maybe not the biggest of numbers, but probably the most spectacular. Everything else got got away without too much damage. I was utterly killed. It's, as I said, it is probably the most spectacular because there's absolutely nothing to do with lag. This is on board with me. Can't see anything because of sun. You can't see anything at all because of the sun briefly. Then it's covered in smoke and I have a Holden in front of me. So you come around the corner, I can see there's a Hyundai on the inside. The Holden just dodges the MX-5 and I've got nowhere to go. I slam on the brakes, but it's not going to do very much. I go up on my nose and then I have no idea. <laughs> what's happening. An MX-5 actually went underneath me and flipped me over, almost landed it perfectly. Uh, bounced up, the, there was another 180 spin sort of on my side, and there we go, landed it again. And uh, some more cars go flying past. Yeah, that was a pretty big one. That was a, <laughs> it killed my car completely. Everything else was fairly okay from that. Well, I say fairly okay. Everything else moved a lot better than my car did anyway. <laughs> I mean, the MX-5 that hit me didn't really take a huge amount of damage uh, from that. It took some, but not nowhere near as much as me. So yeah, I had a pretty big shunt uh, in this particular race. And to be honest, this race did become quite boring. Not a lot went on for, for a large portion of it. Quite a few cars had to go to the pits from that coming together with various broken bits. So yes, the field did become relatively uh, spread out. This was the closest battle I could find. This was over what was now third place, I believe, between a Holden. Always good to see these <laughs> in any sort of race. A Nissan 370Z and a very strange sounding Honda. I'm not sure if that Honda hasn't got the turbo rally engine in it. It might. I was trying to figure out what engine it is. I think it might be, actually. Uh, anyway, the Holden is uh, under threat, goes very defensive into the chicane, just runs a little bit too wide. The Nissan's trying to get up the inside as they climb the hill towards this scary final corner. It's a very, very fast corner. Think about going too wide in the end, the Nissan backs out of it, realises he doesn't really have, have the grip to take that tighter a line and has to sort of concede the position as they run up towards the first corner. The Honda is, is there just in case. Nissan seems to be pretty quick in a straight line. The Holden was sort of the middling car, while the Honda was the best through the corners but lacked the straight line speed again at the top of the hill. The Nissan was there having a look. He got a much better drive out of turn one but was just too far back, couldn't really try anything, and now he's got the Civic uh, all over the back of him, and also <laughs> gets a little bit too much of the kerb through there uh, as they come towards this, this sort of long, funny corner. The Honda's up the inside as they, as they round this very really never-ending corner almost. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if it was a little lag or the, how, how they tangled, but the, <laughs> the Nissan and Honda end up off the track. 
and that was about it really for the first race at the front it was a Vauxhall Astra that would take victory. I think he started, certainly started towards the front, I'm not sure if it was on pole or not, um, but managed to avoid all of the chaos and then disappeared <laughs> up the road, basically. If you can keep out of trouble in the opening lap and then set some very quick laps, yeah, nobody nobody even came close. Uh, there was a, a Kia Seed in second a long way back, although the Seed did have to work his way uh, quite a lot through the field, and the Holden Commodore. Would not hold in Commodore, the HSV, that's the one, my bad, uh, would get third, which is good Good to see them up on the podium. Now, our second race, we went to the Catalonia, oh god, International? Is it International on this layout? I've completely forgotten, we've used this track enough times. We went to Catalonia, anyway. A track that I quite like. There is a danger that I'd never realised until the, <laughs> doing this particular race, and that is on the opening lap. The cars at the back of the field, which was me and I think the Nissan, you just cannot see a thing into turn one with the smoke. I had absolutely no idea where, <laughs> where turn was. You just couldn't couldn't see anything at all. Uh, the Subaru that we'll follow at the moment gets very brave and goes round the outside of two cars at the top of the hill. That gets overtaken for the evening. Well done. I'm managing <laughs> going around the outside of one car is pretty damn tough. But doing two at that corner, that's pretty <laughs> That's pretty brave, uh, I'm not going to lie. The Holden is trying to come back at him, though, around the outside of the hairpin. That's also quite a difficult manoeuvre to do. The Holden looks like he's got it done, but as they come up towards the next corner, doesn't quite have the grip that the Subaru does. Subaru can carry much more speed around that corner, and, yeah, the Holden just can't can't quite get the move done. This, this final section here then becomes very tight, very narrow. It's hard to overtake, especially with a car the size of the Holden, a uh, MX-5 has found himself pointing the wrong way through that section as well. However, as we come on to the long straight, your best overtaking bet is into Turn 1 as an Audi estate car gets very sideways. And this Subaru was struggling with straight line speed. Again, it's a fairly sizable straight uh, down here. The Holden is closing in as they come up towards the first corner. Has a look at the inside. However, you do need pretty damn good brakes to get stopped here. And the Subaru was very good under braking. The Holden, not quite so much. Uh, we did have a, a crash to rival mine. This one was lag and an MX-5 tried to go into orbit. It, se <laughs> it seems Forza 5 was uh, against the MX-5 cup cars in, <laughs> in this particular event. That's probably the biggest airtime we've ever had in uh, in versus the community history. I think I, I managed to do a corkscrew flip and another MX-5 cup tried to go to space. It was eventful. It, it certainly was eventful. Again, I was finding myself having to work work through the field, having a bit of an opportunistic overtake, a bit of a dive into the very tight track. I think that's the first time I've ever got a properly clean, sensible pass done in, in that corner. Uh, you just see how bad the smoke is here when there's just streams of cars going past. As we come to the start finish straight, my MX-5, despite it being, well, more of a handling car you would expect, actually had decent straight line speed. It was a pretty quick car, breezed past another MX-5. It wasn't that much slower than the Holden in a straight line, and it turned an awful lot better than the Holden. So as he ran a little bit wide through the first corner, I could scoot past and then set my sights on the Audi estate car in front of me. I was really impressed, actually, with the amount of straight line speed I got out of this MX-5. It was doing really rather well. Further back, I think this was for 10th position. It was somewhere like that. Uh, an Audi uh, fighting against another MX-5. The MX-5s were popular in this, <laughs> in this particular I think there were about four or five of them. In, in this race at this time. The Audi trying to go around the outside. A couple of back markers have a crash on their own. Uh, in the background, the Audi's st still there, still fighting. Uh, keeps himself on the inside for this next corner. Maybe a little bit of a touch between the pair of them. The Mazda is going a little bit sideways. The Audi doesn't really have the grip to do very much about it as they come towards the final couple of corners. As I said, you can get overtakes done here, as you saw that I did. The Audi has a dive. It is quite hard, though. It is very hard. It is a very, very narrow sort of section. Not a, not a particularly big braking zone, so you need to have a big car difference if you're going to get the move done. As they come on to the start-finish straight, the Mazda still has the position, but doesn't have the speed of the Audi. The Audi goes soaring past. However, with all of that speed, you do still need to be able to get it stopped into turn one and the Audi wasn't quite as good on the brakes as the guy expected and that's oh, that's a trip into the gravel trap a few cars went off there just not quite getting it stopped in time 
Uh, again, this race has spread out quite a lot in in sort of the midsection. Uh, there was a good few laps where not much was going on. The Holden here had a big slide, the Audi estate car had a big slide, and then suddenly all of these sort of groupings, these pairings, uh, <laughs> appeared. The Hyundai here trying to find its way past the Holden. An unusual battle this one, in that I'm going to say the Holden is the better handling of the two. Not normally, you'd normally assume the Holden would be the straight line speed car here, but that wasn't exactly the case. That lag spike, you see there? Yeah, that killed me. Uh, me and the Subaru were going side by side through this final chicane, and well there's our cars, and that's what ended up with them. Exactly. Forza was not happy with the MX-5 Cup cars. It didn't like them. It really didn't, didn't want them doing well in this particular particular race. Now, as we come on the start-finish track, the Holden's got a pretty, or it did have a pretty sizable lead. Then comes the Hyundai. The Genesis are pretty damn quick. I've had blooming quick cars. I found out last week on Forza 4, on 5 it appears they, they were doing an equally good job. The Holden manages to get to the inside, but again, just can't quite get it stopped. Although, got it stopped a little bit better than the big Audi that uh, was one of the, the many cars that explored that sand trap at turn one. So now there was a three-way battle over, I think it was fourth place. Yeah, actually, I'm pretty sure it was fourth place. And these three were to be the most exciting group of cars in the entire race. Again, it got spread out. There were a few broken cars from, from lag spikes in this one. So again, not perhaps the most spectacular of races. There was still some pretty good racing going on. The Audi here, very quick in a straight line. Uh, breezing past the Holden. Gets up the inside of the Genesis, but can't quite hold it. The Genesis can carry good enough corner speed, but the Audi gets a very neat run through this next section and tries to get to the inside at the top of the hill. It's, it's a scary moment going too wide, especially in cars this size. They're pretty damn big vehicles, especially the Audi, a hugely long car. Audi's trying to get to the inside through this very fast chicane. It's, it's, again, that's a pretty tough place for, to do overtaking the Audi. Thinks better of it and backs out the Hyundai going very defensive into the hairpin. These pair are just starting to drop the Holden. The Holden can't quite keep up with uh, with these two and then this sort of final few corners you know there's not much room for overtaking the Audi doesn't really bother having too much of a look your best bet keep it neat and tidy through here unless you've got really good brakes and loads of grip there's no point having a dive there's no point positioning your car on the inside because you're only going to slow yourself down you're not really going to get an overtake so if you keep it neat and tidy through here get a good run out of the final corner then you can worry about out dragging them into turn one as it happens in this case the Genesis gets a big slide coming onto the start finish straight and the Audi can breeze past and there is no trouble at all while the Holden is there in case they do anything silly but doesn't really quite have the speed of the other two. At the front it was the Astra again that would take the victory. Very similar, similar finishing order to this one with the Astra taking the win with the Seed coming in second again. These two cars got to the front, avoided the chaos and then drove away from the, from the rest of us basically. This time around though it was a Nissan 370Z I believe that came in third. It was a pretty good race this one. It was a shame about the lag. I think it would have been a lot more interesting had there not been a few humongous lag spikes. And uh, yeah, having been killed in the lag spikes and having had to take our trips through the pit lane to get our cars working again, uh, we re-emerged and continued the battle. Instead of being for third though, this was now over, I think it was 12th or 13th, or it was something like that. Um, yeah, I found myself racing the Subaru. As I said, the Subaru was pretty, pretty damn good through the corners, very good under braking as well, I think it would catch you out how late it would break, whereas my MX-5 uh, was good through the corners, but it also had that little bit more straight line speed than the Supra, so as I get up the inside, uh, coming up towards the final section, I can get the move done, the Supra is trying to come back at me, I've got to take a little bit of a narrow line through these, through these next couple of corners, however, I do have the straight line speed as we go past the transit, uh, as we come onto the start finish, right? I can carry enough corner speed and then have the straight line speed advantage as well to be able to run away from the Subaru. Our third and final race went to Yaz Marina, one of the alternate layouts. I like this layout. The curves are very nasty <laughs> around here. Uh, we're following a Mustang. It's a brave move from another Holden uh, going between the Mustang and the Subaru to get the position. It's a little bit hectic further back, getting everybody through that kind of, it's a twisty chicane and you also got to be very careful over the curbs here. Dip a wheel over the curb, it's very easy to spin out cars, especially the small light vehicles 
can have problems. The Audi TT gets brave around the outside. That's another place that's scary to go too wide through that corner. The Formula One car, I'm pretty sure that bit there is all flat out and is all very, very, very straightforward almost. In these, it is less than... <laughs> less than straightforward as a Dodge tries to go around the outside of a Mustang there's a Fiat 500 on the inside of the corner again pretty chaotic with the smoke as well <laughs> it's in some places when you were further back you just couldn't see what on earth was going on it was yeah it was it was strange I'm not sure why it was so noticeably bad this time I think it might have been lagging just a tiny bit and it was making weird amounts of smoke come off cars Fiat 500 then promptly shoots away I think I got some serious acceleration. Not very often you see a Fiat 500 blast its way past a Mustang and a Dodge Charger. The Charger's are having a look around the outside. Can't quite get it stopped in time. Is that a little bit uh, too wide on there? And then a Subaru BRZ ends up uh, being a little bit of a punching bag uh, through that corner. Uh, there was to be another fairly long train in this one starting to form behind the Mustang, this BMW, uh, trying to go around the outside at turn one, not particularly successful, successfully, it's a pretty hard corner to, uh, to actually try that, the Dodgers uh, chosen to have to go sort of across that escape road a bit, it's very very dangerous going out there, you can see the, the, the sort of the nasty dip you get on the outside of the curve, you put a wheel over there, very easy to have your car go, <laughs> go round in circles, so you definitely don't want to be running wide there. Uh, deliberately. BMW though has a big has a big dive at that corner. I wasn't sure he was going to get it stopped there. He does make the move stick and the Mustang can't really do very much about it. Of this entire track, aside from perhaps the first corner, that's the most likely place to overtake. And that's a pretty scary place to be doing the overtaking. The, the wooden Fiat was flying along and uh, out dragging the Audi TT into turn one while the Fiat was very quick in a straight line perhaps not quite so quick through the corners the Audi can get him back uh, through the first sequence there's a Mercedes uh, a something AMG I can't remember that can't remember the numbers on it that was also sort of sitting in there just, just watching in case anything silly happens between these two not quite up there challenging yet but uh, yeah just, just sort of sat in there the Fiat too far back to have a dive but it doesn't really matter the Audi just now breaks himself the downside you do get with some of the four-wheel drive cars I think the Audi and the Mercedes will both still four-wheel drive it can while well, you have excellent grip you get great acceleration out of the corners can be a little bit understeery um, <laughs> at times and the Fiat can now can now blast away with the, probably the quickest or one of the quickest cars certainly uh, in a straight line I was yet again working my way up the order <laughs> found myself Funnily enough, with the Subaru and the Nissan 370Z as we come through this very, very fast section. And this corner coming up would be my favourite of the overtaking spots around here. Get to the inside, have a bit of a dive, make sure you don't run too wide. You can get away with running a little bit wide because the next corner curves to the left. And the manoeuvre is done past the Subaru in front of me. A Dodge Charger and Ford Mustang were going at it, so I could very quickly close up to these two. As I said, the Mazda, my MX-5, was pretty good in a straight line. <laughs> there was a huge dive from the BRZ. As I said, that thing can really get stopped very, very quickly. Uh, however, I will pull away from it very easily in a straight line. My Mazda was not bad. I mean, it wasn't a match for the Charger or for the Fiat 500, for that matter. Uh, but it wasn't, it didn't lose as much time as I feared it might. The Nissan 370Z was also pretty quick in a straight line, but it didn't catch you, it didn't catch me such a huge amount uh, over the straights that I was kind of overwhelmed. So I could keep a, keep a sort of a decent pace uh, going. There's a BMW uh, 1M and something, there's the Holden again, were, were going side by side in front of us. The Subaru very nearly caught me out. I didn't expect him to, to be able to get stopped that quickly. Now I was right up behind the Mustang, needing to get past it uh, as quickly as possible. Sure enough, it was to the same place for, <laughs> for an almost carbon copy of an overtake. Up the inside, this time I don't run as wide. The Mustang it tries around the outside, doesn't have enough grip though to make the manoeuvre stick. And the Nissan is there, sort of ready to pounce on the Mustang. And uh, they try to go three wide. <laughs> in that corner. A little bit of a bump between this. I think the Nissan just doesn't didn't expect the Subaru to be able to break that late. Because the Subaru can make up so much time uh, under braking. At the, uh, towards the front anyway, it was the Audi TT and Mercedes that were closest fighting over third position. Again, the Mercedes had a, had a bit of a dive, caught the Audi out there. A little bit of a bump between them, but uh, 
They get around the first the first corner's okay. It's another corner, much like the, the final corner at uh, Catalonia. It's quite narrow through there. It's very hard to overtake, especially with the curves being so dangerous. You don't really want to run the curves any more than you absolutely have to. The Mercedes gets a very quick run through the first part, but it's just a little bit too wide. That's the understeer that you can see from these cars occasionally. And now the Mercedes is just a little bit too far back to try anything. We'll have to do all of that work but all over again. The, the Nissan and the Subaru were still caught up behind the Mustang for a couple of laps. Eventually the Nissan pounces and uh, can simply outdrag the, the Mustang uh, through, through one of the faster corners, then throws it all away almost with a big slide in the braking zone. Not a place you want to be going sideways. Mustang now sat right behind him. The Subaru is there ready to try and dive at wherever he thinks he can get away with it. That time didn't quite come off. Uh, ignore the, the blue BRZ. That's a, it's a lap down car. Uh, the, the Nissan, uh, again, this was another one of these, these cases where it's an unusual speed versus handling thing. Where you would expect the Mustang traditionally to be the quicker car in the straight line, it, but it wasn't. <laughs> the 370Z can can blast away down the straight. I think in this case it was a little bit more more balanced towards the 370Z. But yeah, I wasn't expecting to see <laughs> the Nissan far away in a straight line. Not a huge amount, but uh, still fairly fairly impressive. At the front though, it was to be Lightning McQueen driving a Fiat 500. <laughs> that would take the victory. These two Fiats were blooming quick. It's actually quite interesting in this. The fastest laps between, I think it's about second and me down in ninth. There was less than a second between the fastest laps. If we had all been close on the track, it would have been a monumental race. Uh, this Fiat at the front was quite a lot quicker. Uh, but yeah, there were, there were some very, very, very close lap times going on in uh, in this one. Yeah, it had been it had been good fun. It was a shame about the lag. In the, well, there was a shame about the big crash in the first race. It wasn't the fault of lag. Uh, it was a shame about the lag in the second one. Uh, my, my little MX-5 Cup did not have did not have the best of times, despite being quite a good car. Uh, yeah, it was interesting. There's still a good variety of vehicles, even though we ran modern cars. There were some surprising results as well. You wouldn't have expected an Astra to have won two and a Fiat 500 to have won the third. There's not the the victory, the winners that uh, that I quite expected. But there we go. Anyway, yeah, that is it for, for this week's. The next Fair Race versus the Community shall be held on Thursday the 18th of September. We shall be back on Forza Motorsport 4, and we shall be running C-Class Toyota MR2 Supercharged, the 1989 one. You can choose how you build it into C-Class, so you could go for perhaps a little bit more power for that for that better straight line speed, or you could go for all handling parts to carry the maximum corner speed. Normally when we do sort of a single make race, we get some pretty close racing. I haven't done one for a while, so we're going to give it a go. If you would like to take parts, then you can sign up on our forums. There will be a link in the description. Uh, uh, yeah, find the Ferris versus the community section, and that is where you sign out. However, that is it for today, so thank you very much for watching, and until next time, a goodbye.